With the unveiling of the very first iPhone being over a decade ago, it would be an understatement to say that this revolutionary phone has seen some significant improvements. From the App Store debut to the advent of Apple Pay, in today's video, we explore the evolution of Apple's iOS. OS 1.0 The unveiling of the original iPhone way back in 2007 brought us the very first version of Apple's mobile operating software. Simply named iPhone OS, this software might seem incredibly primitive in comparison to today's iOS, but back then it was revolutionary. The initial iPhone OS featured just 15 applications, and with no App Store or iTunes in place, those apps were what you were stuck with. Instead of supporting third-party applications, Apple encouraged developers to program web-based tools that will behave like native apps. This approach was quickly scrapped just eight months later in favor of the first iOS software development kit, which has since paved the way to the 2 million-plus apps supported on the iPhone today. iOS 2 The App Store was the biggest newcomer to iOS 2.0, bringing with it thousands of applications from third-party developers. This milestone pushed the iPhone years in front of the competition, while simultaneously providing users with limitless possibilities. Apple introduced home screen pages to make room for the additional application icons, along with other notable features, including the ability to open Microsoft Office documents, take screen captures, and save photos in Safari to the Photos app. iOS 2.0 also included the first emoji integration, a beloved feature that still stands strong to this day. iOS 3 iOS 3 was an incredibly important release for Apple, not because of any groundbreaking new features, but because of the small improvements that they made at the request of their customers. iOS 3 finally bought the ability to cut, copy and paste, which was a feature that could already be found on competing platforms. GPS accuracy was improved significantly, and the magnetic compass was added to the iPhone's Maps app. The update to iOS 3 also added support for video recording on the iPhone 3GS, and the SMS app was renamed Messages. Spotlight Search also came into play in iOS 3, along with the ability for users to tether their iPhone to a computer for internet access. iOS 4 Released on June 17, 2010, iOS 4 brought some huge improvements to the iPhone 4, adding new features that were specifically targeted at power users. App folders, Wi-Fi tethering, spell check, customized spotlight searching, a unified email inbox, and support for multiple exchange accounts were all added in an attempt to sway devoted BlackBerry users over to the iPhone platform. Due to the iPhone 4 being the first iPhone to feature a front-facing camera, iOS 4 also saw the support of FaceTime video calling. The biggest and most notable feature of iOS 4 was multitasking, allowing apps to perform tasks while the user was elsewhere. This meant music playback in the background, local pop-up notifications, and allowed apps to save their state for when the user returned. iOS 5 The addition of over 200 new features made iOS 5 the most significant iOS update so far, and it included some real biggies. Siri was born, although limited to the iPhone 4S, and replaced voice control with a virtual assistant. Siri could answer questions, communicate with certain applications, and also transcribe text from the web. The first iMessage application was added, allowing users to message other iPhone users for free, similar to BlackBerry's BBM. iOS 5 also saw Mobile Me being replaced with iCloud, allowing users to back up their device to the cloud, save documents and files, and also automatically download applications across all of the user's devices. The notifications were also revamped, which had previously been a huge pain point for iPhone customers iOS 6 iOS 6 saw fewer changes than iOS 5, however, there were still a number of notable improvements. FaceTime calls, which were previously Wi-Fi only, could now be made over cellular networks. The phone app also got a new keypad design and allowed users to respond to incoming calls via text message rather than answering them. Probably the biggest change to come out of iOS 6 was the ditching of Google Maps after Apple created its own Maps application. Unfortunately, the release of Apple Maps was not successful, resulting in the subsequent firing of iOS chief Scott Forstall. However, this did lead to the huge changes to come in iOS 7, so it could be seen as a blessing in disguise. iOS 7 With the departure of former iOS chief Scott Forstall, Apple handed the user interface design of iOS 7 to Johnny Ive, resulting in the biggest visual redesign of iOS since 2007. The glossy three-dimensional UI elements were scrapped in favor of flatter icons, gradient colors, and sliding transparent paints. This new minimal design approach has been an integral part of Apple's OS ever since and is a key feature that attracts so many users to the platform. The visual aesthetic shift was a big move by Apple and definitely stole the show. However, iOS 7 also housed some incredibly important features. The highly anticipated control center that was added gave users a quick way to toggle Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, and a number of other settings. 
Multitasking also received a long overdue facelift, which now allowed users to double-click the home button to reveal a screen of app cards, which they could swipe up or down to kill any set app or simply tap on a card to switch to that app retrospectively. iOS 8 After the big changes that iOS 7 brought to the iPhone, Apple chose to avoid any big moves for iOS 8 and instead opted to make a good thing even better. The biggest feature of iOS 8 called Continuity brought a whole new level of interactivity between a user's iPhone or iPad and their Mac computer. With iOS 8 and OS X 10.10 installed, users could seamlessly pass information between their mobile devices and their desktop computers more efficiently than ever before. Apple also added its first QuickType keyboard feature, a text prediction system that guessed the next word that you're going to type. This was already being implemented by Google Keyboard and SwiftKey, so it was a very welcome feature for iOS users iOS 9 iOS 9 once again saw no major groundbreaking changes to the platform, however, it did iron out many of the instability issues that some users reported having with 7 and 8. One significant feature was the addition of Apple Pay, a service that gave iPhone users the opportunity to pay for items without carrying around their cash or card. Newsstand was removed to make way for the all-new Apple News app, Notes finally gained the ability to draw and add rich content, and Apple Maps got some new and improved support. Siri also got some improvements, which is an update that many believed was long overdue. iOS 10 Apple CEO Tim Cook labelled iOS 10 as the mother of all releases, and he wasn't wrong. iOS 10 was packed to the brim with features that didn't disappoint. There are a lot of visual changes that came with iOS 10, mostly affecting the home screen and the notification centre, but the most dramatic change came in the form of an iMessage overhaul. Apple developed iMessage into a full-on platform by including a new designated marketplace for add-on apps and stickers, making it an ecosystem in its own right. iOS 10 also saw Apple opening up Siri to third-party developers, the Stock Photos app gained a bunch of new capabilities, and Apple Music got a smarter, more user-friendly interface. iOS 11 Introduced on June the 5th, 2017, iOS 11 brought with it some big changes and was said to take the best and most advanced operating system and turn the dial all the way up to 11. iOS 11 introduced a number of subtle but notable design changes to the interface elements. Text got bolder, apps like calculator and phone received a new look, and the lock screen and control center were entirely redesigned. Siri received some more improvements in the way of a more natural-sounding voice, better learning capabilities, and could now translate English into several different languages. The App Store also received a big revamp in iOS 11, making it easier for users to discover fresh apps and games. iOS 12 iOS 12 was focused mainly on improving one feature, speed. The rest of the update went mostly unnoticed, especially when compared to the big changes that happened between iOS 10 and 11. However, now that we look back, there were some great additions made. As well as making iPhones feel and perform faster than ever, iOS 12 also saw the addition of Screen Time, a feature that details how much time users spend on their device and on individual apps. iOS 12 also brought with it support for grouped notifications, so users could interact with or dismiss multiple notifications from the same app at once. Better AR capabilities, group FaceTime, and the addition of the ever-fun Memoji were also amongst the added features. iOS 13 Despite Apple continuing to focus on optimization, iOS 13 offered up a long list of new features in addition to the once again faster and more efficient iPhone. Apple added a new system-wide dark mode option, which changed the entire look of the operating system from light to dark, optional of course. Apple overhauled the Photos app and introduced a brand new feature that curates your photo library and shows you a selection of highlights by day, month or year. The Maps app also received an update again and featured broader road coverage, better pedestrian data, more precise addresses and more detailed land cover. iOS 13 was full of great features, updates and tweaks, which has only made us more excited for the highly anticipated iOS 14. iOS 14 There's a load of hype surrounding this new update, as always. However, this latest iOS could mark a real turning point for the iPhone. Apple will be including several features that we've been seeing on Android for years and iOS users have been looking at with a jealous eye. This is great news for iPhone devotees and will potentially cement iOS 14 as the greatest update yet. Notable features include Home Screen Widgets, which has previously been a massive differentiating feature between iOS and Android. An app library which is very similar to Google's App Draw, offering a single view list of every app on your phone, regardless of its visibility on the home screen. And unlike Android, Apple's app library will automatically arrange apps into different categories, such as social, entertainment or health. 
Picture-in-Picture Picture will also be added to the iOS 14 update, allowing users to watch small, thumbnail-sized videos in the corner of their screen whilst they do other things elsewhere on their mobile. As you would expect, there are plenty of other new additions coming along with iOS 14, including third-party default browser and email apps, discrete voice assistant, and also a back-tap feature of sorts that will allow users to tap the back of their iPhone to trigger specific actions, like take a screenshot or launch a certain app. The best part, though, is choice. Apple won't be forcing any of these new features onto their users. iOS 14 will still feature the same classic iPhone grid look that we all love, but if we want to add some widgets, watch YouTube in the corner and scroll through our app library, we ultimately can.